Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. And today I want to talk about these G-Shock squares. Well, this is my collection of G-Shock squares. I know those don't really count. Those are the 6900 models. And maybe for some people, these don't count either. These are the, uh, you know, the G-Shock King models. But uh, out of the rest of these, what is that? That's 19 G-Shock squares that you can look at right here, or 21 if you want to count them that way. So um, it, it's 2023, which means we are officially in the 40th anniversary year for the G-Shock. The original G-Shock looked a lot like this one here in 1983. And, um, you know, they still make them looking like that, but the internals are a little bit more advanced and all kinds of stuff going on with these. Believe it or not, I didn't get into G-Shock squares myself until about five years ago. Okay, <laughs> but I managed to get all of these in the meantime. Now, uh, because it's the 40th anniversary, some 40th anniversary G-Shocks have already been announced. We're kind of waiting to see what else might be announced. What I'm seeing so far, though, is a lot of G-Shock really high-end models, limited edition, collector stuff, and stuff that's made from really high-end materials and very, very expensive watches. And... Ah, oh, that's just really not my uh, my thing. <laughs> this one here will cost you about a uh, hundred dollars, and it comes with a regular resin band. I updated to this um, cheap Chinese copy of the uh, combi bracelet that Casio sells, and so far so good. Uh, that's kind of my beater watch for most occasions. Uh, but I have one that's even more beat up <laughs> that I really really use um, when 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 there's the possibility of scratching it up. So uh, let me go over these. But uh, what I really want to zero in on today is my newest G-Shock square, which is this one here. I just got this uh, a few weeks ago. So just briefly, let me talk about this watch and what are all the things I like about it. Tough Solar Multiband 6, which means it uh, automatically receives atomic time information to set itself to the right time. So with Tough Solar, you never have to change a battery, or at least you won't have to change a battery for well over a decade, okay, then uh, you don't have to set the time because multiband six will keep this thing perfectly synchronized as long as you're within range of one of these six multiband transmitters in different parts of the world. And uh, also just all the things you like about a G-Shock, 200 meter water resistant. Um, it's got five alarms. It's got the hourly signal. It's got a countdown timer, just everything you'd want there. So there are several variations of this, all using the module 3159. This is the older module that uh, was the, the flagship module for this watch for many, many years until they came up with an updated version of it, module 3495. So here are the two modules side by side, the old one and the new one. And you can't really tell much of a difference here. It's a different case on, on the watch here. So this is a, a little bit updated model that way. Uh, the, the, the dead giveaway, if you want, right there where this has an automatic uh, electroluminescent backlight and this just has an LED backlight. So if those are activated, one says A-E-L and one says L-T. So this is the newer module and it does all the same things except just a few extra features on this one. For example, the countdown timer, you can set hours, minutes, and seconds. And also when you scroll through the different modes, uh, you have, let me see, in some of the modes there, you see the local time plus the stopwatch. And in this one, you don't see the local time when you're in stopwatch mode. Also in countdown timer mode, and then also this one has five different world time time zones you can choose. This only has one. So, you know, just a few little uh, minor, for some folks, uh, just, just minor updates on the module there. But then that is the, the major difference between module 3159 and 3495. Now then, <laughs> in the meantime, somewhere in between uh, this one and this one, Casio started releasing uh, G-Shock squares with Bluetooth-enabled modules. For example, this one right here in the middle. Now, this has Bluetooth, and you can see there are some minor differences in uh, the display, not just the tinted color there on the display, but this one doesn't show you the battery level. You can get that through an app on your phone using Bluetooth, and then also this allows you to do some of the settings with your Bluetooth app. And if you happen to be in a place where the multiband six reception isn't uh, working as well, you can use this uh, Bluetooth connection on here 
to set this to the exact time right down to the second. So uh, those are the major, you know, the major options. Now this one is kind of being phased out. So now you're stuck with uh, these two modules here, uh, or at least variations. There are other Bluetooth um, versions of the G-Shock Square that while the module may be a little different, uh, the functions are all of the same things. For example, how about this guy here? This is one of the uh, different modules, even though it does all the same things as this Bluetooth module here. Uh, it is a slightly different module because I think it has the STN um, LCD anyway. And so this is a full metal, you know, G-Shock Square, all metal. Look, I've even scratched it just a little bit there. But, you know, whatever. It's a G-Shock. It's fine. Um, so, yeah, you get this. And then there are some high-end <laughs> versions of this made with titanium, made with special materials. You can get one that costs literally $4,000 for a full titanium, you know, G-Shock square, but the, the module does all the same things as this guy here, which will only set you back a few hundred dollars, or even, you know, something like this, which you could get this, or, you know, this one here does all the same things with a negative display. You can get this for well under $200 if it's still out there somewhere. Anyway, so yeah, I got a, I've got a pretty good collection of G-Shock squares here, and... Here's the deal. When I look at shockbase.org, this guy here, there's uh, 44 distinct variations of this watch, uh, the same module, but different color combinations and uh, materials combinations and stuff. So as I look at shockbase.org, I see 44 of them. And out of those, 24 of them have a negative display. And I typically find that the negative display is harder to see at a glance. So I tend to avoid the negative display. I haven't, obviously haven't avoided it entirely. But so, um, yeah, so 44 of those. So as soon as they announced the new module, which would be this module here, I expected uh, Casio to just start re-releasing all the, all the old color combinations with the new module. And that has not happened yet. So far, it's been over a year. There are, uh, according to shockbase.org, 10 variations that use the new uh, module number 3495. And out of those, three of them have the negative display. And three of them are just slight variations on uh, this color scheme right here. So uh, I haven't gotten a lot of new watches with this new module, but I do have some, for example, this one that you're seeing right here, which has the carbon fiber material for the, the watch band and also uh, this bezel here. And then this is the, the kind of the NASA collector edition, which is again, same module with this NASA uh, space suit color scheme and, you know, NASA logo and whatever on it. So yeah, so I got that one there. So I got those two. And that brings me around to this one here, the newest watch in my collection of G-Shock squares. This is the GWM5610U-C. And so that has a little splash of blue and you can see just a slight blue tint on the LCD screen itself. But other than that, all the same features you'd expect from these other watches. You can see the watch band a little more smooth on this part here than some of the standard bands that come with your G-Shocks. So uh, this one, yeah, I found it for a pretty good price, uh, under $150. Uh, they're, they're a little bit, I don't know, the, the prices are all over the map lately. So when I found a good deal on this, I jumped on it. And it's just a very nice, nice representation of this basic design. Now, I got one earlier that had, um, this is kind of the, the closest variation of this that was available with the older 3159 module. And you can see they're very similar. The bezel just a little bit different there. Um, you know, the, the, the watch band, very similar on these two. This one's a little more glossy than that one. But so uh, to me, this is kind of the latest variation, which is sort of a re-release of this guy here with a slightly different color. But uh, again, it's a different module. So let's talk about the different, uh, different functions and features of this module. As you can see from the main screen right here, your regular timekeeping mode, you've got the day of the week and the, the month and date. You also have you know hours, minutes, and seconds for the local time. Down there, a little display that shows you whether or not your uh, hourly signal is set to go, and it is. 
uh, whether or not an, an alarm is set to go, which right now there's not, and whether or not a snooze alarm is set to go, which is not. And then right there, it gives you the, uh, the battery level. <laughs> so it's telling me that the battery's at a high charge, and that's pretty good. As long as it's in medium or high, all the functions are available. If it gets below medium, then some of the functions uh, go away until you charge it up. But uh, what I found is that with regular usage, if you get this exposed to normal lighting conditions in your normal everyday life, uh, you'll have plenty of power because there's a solar cell built into the face of the watch that just charges this every day as it's exposed to everyday l normal lighting conditions. And that'll be plenty of power to keep this guy going for years and years and years. Now, if I go to the next mode, uh, here's my world time mode. And I have the ability to, to uh, select five different time zones um, you know, that will just quickly be available to show up as my world time time zone. So UTC and London are the same right now. Um, next I've got, well, it's Paris, um, you know, is that, uh, Hong Kong and, uh, yeah, New York. So if I wanted to change any one of those, I just hold down the adjust button and then, yeah, I just, if I push right here, it, uh, this button down here on the lower right, it's as if I'm going eastward on the map and I can choose a different time zone or I can go back the other direction using this one up here and just choose whatever, whatever time zone I want for that world time time zone. Also, this, if I uh, now push this, uh, this mode button here, then it allows me to select daylight saving time on or off for that other time zone that I've selected. It doesn't necessarily change for daylight saving time for those other world time time zones. So you might have to manually set that. Whereas it usually does automatically change for daylight saving time for your local time zone that you're gonna set up here too. So um, yeah, just be aware that different parts of the world, <laughs> they, they might start and stop daylight saving time on different days than, than it does in the time zone where you live. So keep that in mind. Okay, I'm going to stop that from blinking and go to the next mode, which is my alarm, uh, my alarm screens here. So first of all, my hourly signal, do I want that on or off? I can select that right there, on or off. And it'll just beeps a couple times every hour on the hour. Now if I go here, I can select any one of my five alarms and turn those on or off. And pretty straightforward as far as that goes. Those are my five alarms. Now the, the fifth alarm is a snooze alarm. So if I turn that on, it's going to uh, beep for 10 seconds at eight o'clock in the morning. And then it will wait uh, five minutes and beep again. And five minutes later, it will beep again. And it'll keep doing that for a total of uh, 30 minutes. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can have that snooze alarm for that fifth one if you want to. And then setting them is just really simple. You just hold that until things start to blink. Choose your hours and minutes to set up that, uh, that particular alarm. Okay, now the next mode is my stopwatch, and this is uh, uh, minutes, seconds, and hundredths of a second for the first hour, and then after one hour, everything shifts over, and it shows you hours, minutes, and seconds. And if you go for a full 24 hours without stopping it, it will reset to zero and just keep on going just like this. And when you're in the stopwatch mode, there you have your local time available right there. You can uh, stop that right there, if it's running, you can do the split time with this button up here. And if it's stopped and you go there and it's stopped and you want to just press this button up here on the upper left to reset to zero. So very similar to what you'd expect on a lot of your uh, any digital watches with a stopwatch. But again, this has uh, updated with the uh, local time up there. And countdown timer, similar. You got local time up there. You got uh, hours, minutes, and seconds that you can select right here if I push this. And uh, so I set however, however many hours, however many minutes, and however many seconds I want uh, that countdown timer to go. This countdown timer does not repeat. So once it uh, counts down to zero, it just stops. If you have this set to all zeros, it's a true 24 hour countdown timer. So that's your, those are your options. Uh, anywhere from one second up to a full 24 hours for your countdown on that countdown timer. Uh, next up is, well, we're back to our regular timekeeping screen. So at this point, if I wanted to, if this watch, if I needed to set it up, uh, I would start from here, 
normal timekeeping screen. Hold down this button until uh, those things start to blink there. So first thing I'm going to do is set my home time zone, which for me is the mountain time zone in the continental United States. So uh, it says Denver. That's the, you know, the major city of this time zone, Denver. So uh, I can, again, choose a different time zone. Uh, from different parts of the world, Chicago there, I'm, I'm going eastward on the map if I'm pushing this button down here, or I'm going back westward on the map if I'm pushing this button up here on the upper right. So I'm going to keep that in the Denver time zone. Then next thing is, do I want daylight saving time to change automatically? Or do I want it to always be off or always be on? I have that option right there. I'm going to leave that on automatic because uh, since it has the multiband 6, it will always receive the proper information and it will set itself for daylight saving time uh, when that's supposed to happen. So I'll leave that on auto and I'm going to set, I'm going to push this mode button again. And here's where I can manually set the time if I want to. I can set uh, seconds, hours, minutes, and also I can set the year the month and the date. I can do all that manually if I want to, but I really don't need to because um, I already received that automatically with multiband six. Um, if, if I set this manually to a different time or date, then the next time it's able to receive its atomic time information from a multiband six transmitter, it's going to override whatever I set it to manually with, you know, the, the, the actual time it receives from the atomic clock systems. So here also now I'm in this next mode, I can uh, select 24 hour or 12 hour display. And that affects the entire watch. So, uh, you know, the other time zones, world time, all that's going to be either 12 hour mode or 24 hour mode. And that's how I select what I want there. Next, here is uh, one of the updated features of this module, you can have it uh, display the month and date like that or the, the date and the month like that, which is um, kind of, you know, more standard way in some other countries. But here in the United States, uh, I'll leave it on month date. So that's a nice new feature for uh, folks that live in those other countries where they prefer date month. Uh, here, I can make the abbreviation of the day of the week show up in English or Spanish or French or German or Italian or Russian. I'll leave it on English for me. Here, a key. So I haven't had the microphone pointed at the watch, but uh, if I did, every time I change modes or start and stop the stopwatch, it's going to make a little bit of a beep, but I can silence that beep by putting it on mute right there. And it has a little symbol to show, uh, like a musical note with a line through it to show it's muted. It's still going to make a, a noise when the countdown timer runs out or when one of the alarm goes or uh, when the hourly signal happens but it's not going to make uh, beeps every time I push the button like it would if it were in the key mode. So I got that there. Next up, uh, the backlight, you have the option of keeping that backlight on for three seconds or just one and a half seconds. Uh, that's where you choose that. Next is uh, the receive receiver. So uh, I've, I've mentioned multiband six. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, there are six transmitters in different parts of the world. There's one in China, there are two in Japan, there's one here in the United States, WWVB. Also, there's one in England and one in uh, Germany. So if you happen to live within range of those uh, those transmitters, this will automatically receive time and date information and set itself to the right time all the time. So, uh, you know, a lot of watches after a couple of weeks, it might be off by a few seconds. Uh, but this one is going to set itself and correct itself every single night unless you turn this off. And then, you know, it won't won't try to update there. Uh, you would turn it off if for some reason you wanted to keep this set to something other than the atomic time. Or if you live in a part of the world where it's just not possible, maybe like Australia, they have no atomic time transmitter within range, you could turn that off and maybe it would save a little bit of battery power. But I don't, I'm not going to worry about battery power. Since this is solar powered, uh, it's really not going to affect the running at all by leaving that turned on even, you know, so it's not a battery issue for me. So yeah, you got that there. Uh, power save means that at night, if the watch is not being used, and if it's in the dark, after 10pm, uh, then after a little while, the, the display is going to go blank. And that's an, another power saving function. And then the way to wake it out of that, uh, that blank screen 
in power saving mode would be to press any button or expose the, the watch to light or uh, shake it a little bit because it has a motion sensor inside there. And that will wake the screen up again if you are uh, you know, in that power saver sleep mode. And then I'm back to the beginning. So there you go. Now, as for that multiband six stuff, just a reminder, it will try to set itself. It'll turn on its receiver for just a couple of minutes starting at midnight every night because reception is best at night. So it'll try if it's got a good, uh, good reception and it's able to set itself and check itself at midnight, then it won't try again till the next night at midnight. But if it's not successful, it'll try once per hour until it is successful, up to six times per night starting at midnight. So that's how it keeps itself set to the right time. You want to make sure uh, you're in a, you've left the watch in a place where there's not a lot of things that would cause radio interference. Uh, maybe if you're far away from the multiband six transmitter, you want to put this uh, in the window, maybe clo- on the side of the house that is uh, closer to a multiband six transmitter. There are ways to kind of troubleshoot if you're not getting that multiband six reception. But if multiband six reception is just impossible, this will still run with accuracy up to like, uh, I think it's 15 seconds a month accuracy. So, you know, it's still going to be really, really good accuracy, even without multiband six. But if you have multiband six reception working well, then it's going to be so accurate, you won't even notice ever that it's off by more than just a fraction of a second. Now, uh, it's going to do that uh, automatically every night. But if I wanted to force it to uh, try to set itself at any time, then uh, this button right down here on the right, when I'm in timekeeping mode, I just hold that button down and it's uh, prompting me to keep holding. And now it's in receiver mode. So you can see RCVD is blinking and it's going to try to start receiving. Now, because it's not overnight right now, and because I've got some stuff running nearby that would cause radio interference, it may not be able to receive right now. But typically what would happen is down here, you'd see right there, L1, level one reception. Level one reception is not very good and probably not enough for it to uh, process the, the data that it's receiving from, you know, from the atomic time transmitter. But if it gets up to level two, okay, that's better. If it can sustain level three for about three or four minutes, then it will probably be good, be good enough to set itself. So you want to make sure it's at level three, it's able to sustain level three, and then it'll set itself. So that might not happen right now, like I said, with all this stuff going on in my house. But that's what you want to look for, a good level three reception, and uh, then it's just going to be set to the right time all the time. It'll be great. Now, I'll show you this watch here. This is one of the Bluetooth watches that has all the similar functions with Bluetooth added to it. When this one came to me, it did not have this bracelet. It had a resin watch band, and I updated to this bracelet. I bought the bracelet. Um, you know, this is a genuine Casio product here. And I swapped that out. And now for a lot of people, this is like one of the greatest watches around because it has a nice clear display. Uh, the display doesn't have any color tint on it. It has a little bit of a green color tint uh, you know, outside the display, but just a nice straightforward watch. And if you put this bracelet on it for comfort and, uh, and, and a good fit and whatever, like this is perfect here. So I'm still tempted to take this watch here and maybe swap out this resin band with either this bracelet or uh, this original combi bracelet from, from Casio. So those are a couple of genuine Casio products you could do, and they could put it on here. Now, some people are going to say it's a real big hassle to change, <laughs> change the bracelet. It's really hard to get in there and work with the little spring bars and stuff. And I've found that it's, it's doable. Yeah, it's not the, the easiest thing to do, but it's doable. And I've done it on, obviously, these two watches here and some other watches. The worst, I'm afraid, was uh, these analog G-Shocks here. So uh, like this one, you know, it comes with the resin watch band there. And I decided to replace it with a genuine Casio bracelet that's made specifically for this watch. It's not interchangeable with the G-Shock squares, but it looks the same. And when I when I did this swap here, I really like the way it wears. I, I like the way it looks. It's every, I like everything about it except the actual swapping, <laughs> the actual process of swapping out this bracelet from the original uh, 
resin watch band was a really big hassle. Really, I don't know why. Just real hassle on this watch here. Um, not quite so bad with the G-Shock Square. So I'm going to still leave that as one of my uh, options for the future to swap out this for a bracelet. And then I think that's going to be a really, really great great watch. I mean, it's great already, but if you prefer a bracelet, you could, you could just go to the next level uh, by putting one of those on there. And if you, I guess if you really wanted to, you could go for the, the cheap Chinese third-party imitation Casio bracelet. It's very lightweight. Um, you know, some people think, oh, it's not going to be very durable. It's not going to last all that well. Um, you could try it. You know, it's, it's relatively cheap or spend just a little bit more for the genuine Casio product. All right. So there you go. I think that's a nice looking watch and it really, really feels good and just has that nostalgia built into it, uh, that 1980s look with all the latest technology for the 21st century inside of it. Just a good all around rugged, nice watch. The backlight looks kind of like that. It's, uh, it doesn't look quite so blue to my eyes. The camera makes it look a little more blue. It's, it's more of a white light there. Compare that to the older electroluminescent light. And some people really prefer that, that kind of bluish green glow. But as you can see, it doesn't stay on for very long. So that's the old electroluminescent light. Here's the new LED. And uh, I think that looks nice and clear and I really like that one. Also, there's a way to make this automatically come on. If you were to press and hold this uh, light button, then, okay, the LT disappeared, and that means the automatic backlight is not enabled, but here I can enable that by just holding that down. And so LT is there, and that means that when I turn this, if I'm wearing it and I turn it up towards myself, this might not work because it's not quite dark enough here, but if, I, if, it's, if it senses that it's in the dark there, then if, it, uh, if I just give it that little movement, like I just, tur uh, just tilted it up to look at it, then, yeah, then that can come on automatically for either one and a half or three seconds. So you do have that automatic backlight um, if it's dark enough it will come on and look like that. And that's about it for today. Boy, I just like talking about G-Shock Squares, don't I? What a fun collection to have. And, uh, you know, I think you should just go looking around. And if you find something that has the, the color combinations you want, boy, you got to have a G-Shock Square in your collection. At least one versatile, tough, just the go-to watch for whatever situation. If you want to get one that's uh, inexpensive just as a beater watch, you have fun with that too. And if you want to go real high-end, oh, there are some options. You go with Mr. G and spend several thousand dollars for something like that. But, you know, I'm, I'm a Toyota Corolla guy. I would prefer to keep it, uh, you know, under $300 if possible. <laughs> for each of these watches and just have a good old time with them. So I hope you're having a good time too. And that's what it's all about right here on the Good Timekeeping Show.